to, to minister to people in prophecy is one of the greatest uh, privileges a person can have. He's talking about history unborn. He's bringing the people truth that hasn't arrived yet. And it's so exciting. Uh, newspapers give you dead truth. It happened yesterday. Uh, prophecy gives you tomorrow's truth. It's alive. Say alive! alive. Glory be to God. Uh, we have one of the very exciting uh, studies uh, before us today. It says some taken, some left. I don't really like the study, to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't like to be left especially. How about you? Uh, when, when, when the Lord says go, I want to be about six inches off the ground at that moment. I want to really be in action. Uh, some people are gifted, you know. They're late every time, anywhere. Uh, but I don't want to be gifted that way. I want to be ten minutes early for anything. And then you won't miss anything, you know, if you're there early. Uh, some take and some left in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, beginning in verse 1. It says, then. Say then. then. Now, if you don't follow the little words in the Bible, you don't get the Bible at all anyway. It says, then, at that point in time, and that point in history, at that point in the operation and functions of the Holy Spirit, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps, say lamps, they all had a lamp, and they went forth to meet the bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Now, now, you say, is that correct? Well, Jesus is telling the story. It better be correct. Uh, they that were foolish took their lamps. Say lamps. lamps. See, they did have the facility of doing this thing. They had their lamps and took no extra oil with them. There was their problem. Uh, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They had lamps and oil, extra oil. Those little flat bed lamps that they had in those days wouldn't hold over an ounce of oil anyway. At one time, the little flat things with a piece of cotton sticking up to keep the little lamp burning. But uh, they took lamps and oil, it says. And while the bride, bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. That's been for the last 50 years. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold! The bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him in that very dramatic moment. Now, last Sunday, we were, uh, we were, we were very fortunate. Say fortunate. fortunate. Yeah, we got through the introduction. Uh, <laughs> so today, we're going to start on point one, if you don't mind. Uh, we made it through the introduction, uh, telling you about these people that all loved the, the bridegroom. They were all in love with him. Uh, they thought they were. But, you know, love and action are twins, and when your love has no action, it's dead. And if you could only realize that, that it, would, it, would, it, would help, it would help all of us. All right. And, and, verse, and, and point number one at the bottom of page 80, Jesus told the parable. Uh, this is a part of Christ's answer to his disciples when they questioned him about his second coming and the end of the world. Uh, you see that uh, that's in Matthew chapter 24 that just uh, of course Jesus didn't put the chapters in here you know that the, the a few Britishers about 400 years ago decided that you're kind of stupid so they made you chapters and verses <laughs> but you don't need them you know you keep reading it's, it's good all the way through you don't have to stop when somebody else put a chapter head in there uh, because Jesus didn't put the chapter head he says then now, on page 81 at the top, it says there were 10 of these uh, virgins. They all belonged to the same group, the same company, the same like you're here right now, you see. The, the, their unity was in, they were all together at that point in, in time. And they all lived together. So they had an understanding both of the bridegroom and of each other, just like just like a church does. And so they, they understood that. And they, they, they looked alike. If you had walked in and said, now here are 10 beautiful young ladies, who, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, you know, don't know where to go from there. Uh, the lovely people that were there. Now, I want to tell you, I'm talking to you today. Uh, from this point here, you're all lovely people there. 
And I won't be able to determine among you which, if Jesus came right now, would rise from that seat and go to meet him, you see. But Jesus knows. Say, Jesus knows. Jesus. And, and so if we are very aware that Jesus Christ knows what's on the inside of us, then we should repair anything that needs repairing. And we, we should get ready if there's any getting ready to be done. We, we should get ready. Uh, a little girl went to Sunday school and, and, and the... And the, uh, the preacher preached on the second coming of Jesus, that, he was, that, that we should go out to meet him. And when she got home, she says, uh, Mama, that, that preacher was talking about getting ready to meet Jesus. says, I know one thing, nobody in this house is ready. <laughs> and the mother said, what do you mean we're not ready? She says, well, when we're going to see Grandma, we all pack our suitcases and prepare for it. I said, nobody around here prepared to see Jesus. I can tell you that. I said, I hadn't seen any preparation at all. And I think she woke up the whole family, you know. That if you're going to see somebody, you start getting the suitcase out. And you start wiping it up. And you start putting your glad drags in there, you know. You're getting, you're getting ready. And, and it's about time the church got ready. It's about time the church got ready. Because in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man is going to come. You're point number three there. They all expected the bridegroom. You, you, you shouldn't, not only did they all look alike, very beautiful persons, but they all expected the bridegroom. Now, now that's true of the church today. We all expect him at different times, of course, uh, but we all expect him. And your, your point number, number three, and they all took their lamps. These lamps symbolize their Christian experience. And, and so they were part of this thing, and each one could show his lamp and say, hey, 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 I got a lamp. You know, so they, they were all in on this thing, that, that they, were, they were expecting someone to come, and they had a light to show the way to where they were going to go. So they all had their lamps. And then in number four, they all went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, th that is most interesting to me, that they all went out. If that includes the denominations, that's interesting, isn't it? Because in some denominations, they don't teach anything about the Lord's return at all. In fact, there's some who say the world is going to get better and better, and after we make it perfect, we're going to hand it over to Jesus. Now, they, they get that in page 402, Sears Roebuck catalog, <laughs> because they, they sure don't get that out of the Word of God. Uh, it, it was Jesus, it was Jesus that said, as it was in the days of Noah, say Noah. Well, brother, the, the world hadn't got better in Noah's day. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, it'll be the same today. Brother, I think you can see Lot written all over the face of this country of ours, you know? And, and, and so uh, we see what the Bible says, but we don't see it. When I was a little boy growing up in this country, most of the denominational preacher says the world is going to go, get better and better and says all we really need is an education. You know, when I was a little boy, very few people went to college, and, and the, the, the teachers and the preachers in our, in our city said, when we can get all of our children into the college and give them a university training, uh, you're going to have a world of peace and love. Well, <laughs> we got the universities all right, but the, the devil turned them into hell holes right. uh, to where it's almost dangerous to go there. You might get hurt. Not educated, hurt. And, and so we don't have what they said, that by education, this will become a good world. This will become a good world when the Prince of Peace comes and transforms the hearts of the people and makes the world a good world by beginning inside of human beings. Amen. Legislation cannot make a good world. Can make, can make a good law but not a good world. Uh, goodness begins on the inside and doesn't begin in the lawmaker's room. And all the people said, Amen. they all went out to meet the bridegroom. They, they said, yeah, we, we believe he's coming all right. They all had oil in their lamps. All of them had some oil in their lamps. So they looked so beautiful together, you know. They all looked really identical, you know. So, so, so lovely to see all of them saying, look, look what a great church you got here. They all got a lamp. They all got a little oil right now. And then five of them took extra oil. Uh, now, we don't find that the 
bridegroom told them to do that, inside of them they knew they were going to need something extra. You know who we are? We're that extra bunch. We don't only have oil, brother. We got extra oil. Amen. Say extra oil. Extra oil. Yeah, we, we know if you don't have that extra power of God, that extra anointing of God, that extra wisdom of God, if you don't have the extra, you're not going to make it all the way through. Just what your grandma had is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the mighty power of the Holy Ghost for these last days just before the bridegroom comes. Yeah. Hallelujah! And that we must have. We must have the extra in Jesus' name. That's in Matthew chapter 4, for, uh, chapter 25, verse 4. But the wise took in their vessels with their lamps. And, and so they had forethought. They had preparation for an unknown future. Say, that's good, you know. They had preparation. Uh, they didn't know they'd ever need it or not. They, they, weren't, they weren't told to do it, so they didn't know. But they were wise enough to do it. They were wise enough to do it. And so they had some extra oil in, in their lamps. And then it says the bridegroom tarried. I asked the Lord about that. I, I was a little mean about it. I, I said, you know, God, when I, when I was born on this earth, all of our full gospel preachers said, Jesus is coming soon. And all that bunch of preachers died. But Jesus didn't come. Then the next generation of, of, of these Pentecostal preachers, they preached Jesus is coming soon. And then they all died. And the next generation of these Pentecostal preachers says, these are the signs of the times that we know Jesus is coming soon. And I hadn't died yet. But I was worried about it. I said, what's this coming soon business? Are we a bunch of liars? Or what is it? No, he says in Matthew 24, 37, that as it was in the days of Noah, it says, when I spoke to Noah and told him to build the ark, he was 500 years old. And when the flood came upon the earth, he was 600 years old. My mercy and my grace is 100 years. Oh, I said, that's interesting. Well, it was in the Bible. I just hadn't found it, you see. 100 years. I, 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 are we living in that 100 years grace? The Lord said, yeah. I said, would you just tell me when you started? You say, what did the Lord say? Nothing. He never responds to stupidity. <laughs> That's right, you don't say much to most of us. <laughs> so for the last 92 years, slumbering and sleeping, just moving along, you know, just doing what's all right, you know, just slumbering and sleeping inside of us knowing that we that we need something extra, that we need something more. This is not the whole story. He is going to come. And we're living at the terminal point of this decade, of this century, of this millennium. Who? Did you know in eight years we're going to change millenniums? We're going to come to that seventh day a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. We're going to come to that seventh day, the day of rest. The day when the Prince of Peace will bring peace and speak peace to a troubled world. That day. And so we have a, a new millennium coming upon us, a new century coming upon us, a new decade coming upon us, and, and, and wise men are disturbed all over the face of this earth. They're disturbed. You say, why? They're just a, a conjunction of too many stars up there. They're scared about it. But we're not afraid. We know he's coming. And we're not going to be among those who were sleeping. Poor church people. Of those that were sleeping, we're going to be among those that are alive and awake and alert and moving. Like the sign up above me says. He says, go win them. Go tell them. Can you say amen? amen. All right. You're, you're number eight. At midnight. The cry was heard. At midnight, you have the, the end of the oil. You have the end of a day. You have the beginning of things new now. At the end of the past dispensation, the beginning of a new one, it will be when Christ shall come at midnight, where you change signals, where you change days, you change times at midnight. That's when Jesus is going to come at, at, at that 
point of break. At that point when God says it's enough, it's enough, and it's enough, enough. And then things are going to be new and things are going to be different. Verse 10 says, all the virgins arose. <laughs> when, 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 when the cry was made, go out to meet him. Five of them didn't rise. All of them got up. All of them got up. And they looked at their lamps that were smoking. Some of our lives are smoking. People can't hardly see what we are. Can't see through the smoke. And, and, and so they trimmed their lamps to get the, the burnt part off. And they trimmed their lights, lamps to get the brightness to, to come up and to come out. And, and, and then at that point, the unwise saw their need. It's always interesting to see your need at the wrong time. Isn't that something? To see your need at the wrong time. We, you know, there, there's some people that, that mess their lives up for 40 years and they expect Brother Copeland to fix it up in four minutes. Well, that's kind of hard, you know, for you to mess around for 40 years and you give a man, say, hurry up and get it done here. Get me fixed up. Well, how can he fix up a 40-year wreck, you know? You, you've done the negative thing for 40 years. You want a positive thing, you know? It's better to stay fixed up, you know? We, we just sent our giant Hercules out, out to Iran and Iraq, and, and, I, and I told the captain of the ship, I said, I want a day-by-day -day, uh, expenditure every day. And, and I don't want you to get home and say, my God, there's six weeks of stuff we spent, and I don't know what all we spent it for. You know, so I said, now, every day don't you go to bed until I know how much of my money you spent that day. How I many know that's interesting? <laughs> yeah, when, when one day it's $100,000 for, 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 uh, for a motor that went wrong, you had to fly clear across the Mediterranean to find one over in another country, it gets interesting to see how much money you spent that day. <laughs> you, you see. Uh, and, and, and so uh, 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 if you don't keep a tally on your life, you're not going to make it in that last hour. You're not going to have time to get your tally sheets out. You better do it every day. Live for Jesus every day. Don't say, I'm going to get ready just before he comes. You may not have any time to do that. And so something, something happened here. Uh, it, it says the unwise virgins, they suddenly saw their need. They should have seen it a long time before that. And they wouldn't have had any dilemma at all if they had seen it before that. Uh, these are those, possibly those same virgins that complained about the delay in the coming of the bridegroom, yet they were not ready. They had complained because the bridegroom hadn't already come, and they weren't ready for him when he did come. Some of us want Jesus to have come yesterday, but he didn't. He may not come today, but I just want to tell you, you better, you better keep plenty of oil. You better have some extra vessels. Just surround yourself with extra vessels. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. yeah. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Just surround yourself with it. Full of oil. That, that when you need more, you just keep pouring it in and you'll have plenty. When the bridegroom says, come up, you'll be ready to go. And all the people said? Amen. All right. So the, the, the unwise uh, were not didn't have any oil. They could not say that they had no time. Oh, time was all they did have, laying around sleeping. Oh, dear God. You think that might be the church today? Uh, the bridegroom did not come in the first watch, but in the fourth watch. He had th three watches between. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Came in the fourth watch. That was at the end of it, the termination of it. Every opportunity had been afforded. There was no one that said he couldn't know about it because they had watched in every watch. And I think that those today that says the Lord delayeth his coming. My grandma spoke about it. The Lord has delayed his coming. No, the Lord hasn't delayed his coming. His mercy is extended to the church today. Amen. Clean yourself up. Get yourself ready. Be ready for in such an hour, such an hour. Oh, such an hour. How many really want to be ready when Jesus comes, don't you? I, I know you do. And, and I am believing God that beginning at this point in time, the church will get ready more than any church group ever has in the history of mankind. That we will be the ready group. You say, how in the world can we be ready? Lay aside the things that are contaminating. If you're going to go and see filthy pictures, and if you're going to get messed up in, 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 in a lot of this filthy television, if you're going to get messed up in uh, alcoholism, uh, you, you're going to... Find yourself not ready. 
it's better to clean up ourselves and have ourselves ready. It's better to be a fanatic than to miss it all together. So God wants us to be ready in the fourth watch. The virgins begged other virgins for oil. They didn't know the source. Isn't that something? I, I, can't, I can't give you my faith. You've got to have this stuff born in your own heart. I can tell you what God has done for me, but faith cometh by hearing the word of God. You've got to get the word down inside of you if you're going to have faith. I can hear you say, oh, I want faith like Smith Wigglesworth. No, you don't. You wouldn't even like him if he was here. When he got through slapping you around, you'd say, I don't like that man. He's too rough. You wouldn't be able to see the miracles for getting slapped, you see. And, and, and you wouldn't like him at all. He wouldn't even let me in his front door because I had a newspaper under my arm. He said, I don't like lies in my house. I don't permit lies in my house. Took the newspaper, stuck it in the bushes and said, am I all right now, sir? Yeah. Anything else I have to take off here, you know? And I said, how do you get up in the morning? He says, I get up and dance before God for two hours, every, I mean, for 10 minutes every morning. Just dance with all my heart. Then I take a shower and I dress and I go down and I read. Say read. read. I read the word of God. Well, no wonder he had faith. He had soaked himself in the word. Like Brother, Brother Ken here does. Uh, when I watch him preach as I did this morning, uh, you, you know, he's soaked in the Word. Amen. You can tell the difference when one is soaked in the Word when they're not soaked in the Word. Amen. When a person stays in a cabin for about two weeks and just goes over and over and over in the Word, it gets soaked on the inside. And, and, and you can't beat that for being ready. You can't beat that. If you're not going to read the Word of God, if you're not going to let the Word of God soak into you, very likely you won't be ready. You'll be one of these unwise ones because there's where your oil is. And all the people said, Amen. All right. The virgins begged for oil from the wrong source. They should have known where they got that oil from, and it wasn't from one another. There was another source for that oil. Five virgins, I said, Not so. Go get it for yourself. We have to. Ministers can bless you, bless you, bless you, but finally, you got to go get it yourself. The unwise went to buy. Isn't that a shame? They went to get prayed up. They went to get prayed up at the wrong time. The wise, the wise went in because uh, immediately, immediately the, the bridegroom was there. And they went in with him. There was no purgatory between them. There was no intermediate state. It's amazing how the Buddhists gave birth to purgatory and the Catholics copied it. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later. Uh, and the Buddhists did it in order to get money. They would make, if you've ever seen any of those horrible temples like I have, they got them in the fire and they, 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 they got the devils punching them. And they said, now we can stop that if you give us money. And I think that's still the purpose of it, a purgatory. But it, it's not there. To be absent from this body is to be in the presence of Christ. And there's nothing between you and that. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, says, today thou shalt be with me. That's sufficient, brother. If you're going to be with him today, say today. today. Yeah, that's your, that, that's, your, that, that's your moving day, and you'll be with him. And all the people said, and then the door was shut. You know, when God closes the door, no man can open it. How many know that? If God closes the door, no man. The unwise, they came all right. They knocked all right, but they heard a voice from the inside saying, I'm sorry. The door shut, and they did not get in. The Lord Jesus gave this story, and he was answering his disciples what should be the end of the world when he, he was responding to a question at that time. And you and I should hear it sounding hard in sight of us. In such an hour as we think not, the Son of Man is coming, that we should live every day for the coming of our Lord and Savior. And all the people said, Yes, in Jesus' name. Father, I want you to bless this class and to bless those by television there and, and, and to bless those by shortwave in Africa, in Asia, and those Arabs that receive it over there and write us about it. Bless them and let them see the truth of this whole thing, we pray. And the Buddhists that see it, just touch their hearts and hear it. Bless them, O oh Lord, we pray. And, and the church in this nation, Lord, please help them not to be among the foolish ones that Jesus himself, 
Jesus himself, not an angel, not a preacher. Jesus himself was talking about it. Help us to listen to Jesus and to be ready for him. To be ready for anything he wants us to do. To be ready in any moment of time to obey him. Paul saw a vision at night. And when the sun opened the next morning and shined upon that shore, they saw a little man walking, walking west. Go west, young man, go west. And he was going to Europe to bring the gospel. I'm so glad he didn't delay. I'm glad he came. And he brought salvation to our ancestors. We thank you for it. Now we pray, Lord, that all of us shall do the same. Be ready for our Lord and our Savior. Carry with us what's available to us and to be ready when he comes. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. Bless you. Beautiful. If you love Jesus, say amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Raise your hands and praise the Lord a little bit. Let this thing soak in the inside. And let us say inside, we are ready, we are ready. We are ready! We are ready. We are ready.